<laughs> you heard me talking shit. <laughs> Hello my dance friends and welcome to my channel. Today I get to visit with Maria Vera. Based out of Houston, Texas, this beautiful rock sharky dancer performs as a solo artist as well as with Sylvia Salamanca's troupe Shunyata, the award-winning Belladonna belly dance troupe, and she's also a part of the Folkaholic Dance Theater. Maria is also a beautiful costume designer and creator, crafting unique and rock sharky inspired dancewear, and she also makes her own fake hair for performances, which I am so excited to get some tips on today. Fake hair is nice to use at performances that are outside and hot, like the Texas Renaissance Festival, which Shunyata performs at every year. They're nice for photo shoots, and it also gives you a little breather from all the stress of getting ready for a big show. She's given me some really great tips on how to maintain fake hair, and she's going to share some of those tips with you today. So without further ado, here's Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi. It's so good to see you. I'm super excited to visit with you today about all the things that you do. All of them. Some of the things of all the things that you do. Thank you for having me. I am just dying to know how you got into Rock Sharky. Can you tell us your, your dance story? Yes, absolutely. It would be my pleasure. I am a lifelong performer. I did musical theater when I was younger. I did some samba when I was like in my 20s. When I was growing up and I was in high school, my best friends were Lebanese. And because they were, you know, very strict, my mom was, that was the only place that she would always let me go to because she knew that I was gonna be looked after properly. So the love of Arab music primarily came from them, from the Hadi family. My mother worked as a domestic help slash chef for an Egyptian actress when, I, when we first moved into the country. I just remember seeing her, she spoke several languages and just looking at all the artwork, you know, I just fell in love with the culture. I went on to high school and that's when I met my friends, the Hadi family who were Lebanese and we would go to their house and listen to music and watch movies and we would start dancing and that's when it what my, my love of music and Arab culture began. But as a professional, I started actually in my 30s. I had previously seen Sylvia dancing at the Renaissance Festival in 2008. But I remember her really like catching my eye because I was like, she has a lot of spark and whatever she's selling, I want all of that for me as well. In 2014 or 2015, I was going through a transition of what I wanted to do with my life. I am a trained chef. I still cook, but I can't really do it like in a line like I used to or having my own business because I got diagnosed with arthritis and primarily in my wrists and my fingers, I couldn't do a lot of things. Dance was just kind of one of those things that I just wanted to do something different. I began taking private lessons from Sylvia and then she was like, hey, you're pretty good at performance. She hooked me up with Belladonna in Houston. We went through a whole process of auditioning and learning choreographies and I I really had to kind of stumble and find my own style and just learning how to take constructive criticism and applying it. I grew a lot with them and I'm still with them and very proudly so. I credit them and Sylvia for forming me into the dancer that I am. So you always show up in just the most fabulous outfits for any and every occasion. And I know that you make most of that stuff. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what inspires your costume creation and aesthetic. Absolutely. This is what I'm currently working on. This is the bra to it. Oh no, it's the other way around. This is just the skirt. Uh, this is the bra part that goes on top of it. I'm still waiting on some material to start finishing it off. What happened was, I love going to the fabric store and see what catches my eye. I just saw that fabric and I am a color junkie. You'll very rarely see me wearing black. And if you see me wearing black, it's because I want to appear mysterious. Not like a piñata that I am. Sometimes I just really let the fabric tell me what to do. I love a lot of costume makers, but sometimes it's just like I, I'm, I'm scaling back on my style a little bit and making it more simple, but letting the, the material shine for itself. I'm gonna add some fringe to it. I love fringe. There's some pieces that I'm just really dying to wear again. Like I made this skirt full of, it's like 10 yards of mint colored fringe. And it is so heavy. And if you think, 
that I have not spun myself into a wall by the mere weight of it. You would be wrong. I love good material. I love French and I love whimsy. I love watching drag queens. And I really do get my inspiration from the LGBTQ community. I love the artistry and I love the very, I don't care. Like, I'm just gonna wear, I'm gonna be ridiculous and you're gonna love it. I come from the theater too. So we are like guacamole, we are extra. Actually, they came from my mom when I was in theater. She would make a lot of my costumes. When I was in theater or like throughout my childhood, like if I had to be a can-can dancer, I was gonna have the best can-can costume. And you best believe that I was going to be the one who kicked her like the highest because Oh yeah. So you also have this way of creating your own fake hair, which absolutely intrigues me. And you've given me so many great tips on how to maintain the fake hair I use for performances for the Ren Fair shows that we have. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you got into making fake hair for performances. For my cosplay, I love wearing wigs and I love making like a whole look from wearing a wig. And I'm growing my hair right now, but my hair is very fine. Sometimes when you have shows, or gigs back to back you I sweat a lot and so like it just becomes all like you, you do so much for it and then it's like like you curl it and then it just goes and I sleep now that's what my hair does all the time so I have to add hair pieces and I learned this trick I'm not gonna lie some of my performance experiences come from being an exotic dancer back in the day Exotic <laughs> dancer back in the day, and back in the day was uh, my early twenties. You know, I I learned a lot from primarily black women. We used to do things that you probably shouldn't do, but we learned from all our mistakes. Like just to add more volume to it, we used to use something like this, which is just like the tracks that you find at Sally Beauty Supply. Or um, I don't like to go to Sally because it's more expensive. I know of cheaper places that will sell you like the actual lines of hair for a lot cheaper and for the length that you want. And most of these stores, they have a lot more variety because that's what they do, that like, they sell hair. I bought these, but you can make these. These have little clips in the back and you can also find these uh, there. Can you see? What you do is put a line of fabric and literally sew them on with a needle and you find the clips and then you clip them. What some friends do, I don't do this because I feel like my head would hurt too much if I did, is that you can also double line them, take two pieces of hair and put them together instead of like a single line, sew them together and then put in the clips that this is how the clip clips onto your hair. Now, I have very fine hair. I only use the one line part because I want to protect the very few hairs that I have. This is human hair, so you want to wash this like human hair. I use these a lot during Ren Fair because it's hot, very hot. We're just sweaty, disgusting human beings when it's Ren Fair. So what I do is I do add a few of these and braid them together. These I actually got from a company called Bellamy or Bellamy. They were expensive. But you can definitely make these. There's, there's nothing to them. You cut these to your head length. So what you want to do when you make these, find a spot in your head where you're gonna want to put them where it's comfortable for you. I normally do three lines of hair. You're going to measure the base of the head but above your nape so that when you flip your head over, they still see your natural hairline. So you're going to do the first one above it. The widest part of your head is gonna be the main one that is gonna be about eight inches roughly and then the bottom one is going to be five inches and then you put one at the top in your crown that can be a lot smaller you want to keep enough hair that it won't be discoverable like the people that don't know that I have my adopted hairs but I treat them just as if they were mine you normally do three lines short long medium at the nape I use a rat tail comb like so to make a straight line and I use one of these heavy wooden brushes that is very sturdy. You don't want a plastic one because they tend to bend a lot. And these I use for detangling. And remember, you detangle it from top to bottom to preserve the longevity of the hair because I've had these for over four years and I give them pretty abusive use. So what I do is make a straightish line. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter if it's straight right now. With this rat tail comb, you tease that area where the line is 
and then you put some hairspray. So when you put the piece in your hair, it goes nowhere because you've trapped it. <laughs> but yeah, you tease and then you put hairspray all over it so that it won't go anywhere. And then you have... Ah! Ta-da! Beautiful! How do people find like real hair to attach to clips? Different stores and you just ask them like, I just want in Indian or Brazilian yaki hair. You just mention human hair and then it comes in a package. Also, they sell different kinds of textures. So there's uh, some, some of the textures are primarily for use in braids and locks and stuff like that. As the quality goes up in the, in the kind of human hair that you get, the price is going to go up. But normally that only means that you're going to spend one time that amount of money if you take care of them properly. Wash and condition and make sure to towel dry them first, detangle, hair dry it, detangle again. And then I like to use some hair oil, like argan oil to give it some sheen. If it's real hair, maintain it like real hair. If it's fake hair, still maintain it like real hair and see how long it lasts. I mean, I don't recommend it washing a lot, but I do recommend using the spray and the brush. You've definitely given me tips because I don't know how, but the fake hair that I use always after Rin Fair, even before we really get started with our day, I feel like I have to comb it out a lot and it starts to get really rat nasty right away. I remember not really knowing how to deal with that because even if I put oil in it and tried to comb it out, it would just kind of like rip out even if I was really gentle. But you had suggested soaking it in conditioner and water and then letting it sit there for a little while and then taking it out, really rinsing it out super well so there's no conditioner left and then gently combing it out after that and it was magic. So Maria, if people want to see you perform or dance with you, how do they do that? You okay, bye. Um, I am going to, going to be teaching through Zoom and in limited capacity in person and obviously mass at the Bayan Studio in the Heights in Houston, Texas. A sharpening of skills, if you will, for longtime students. Well, thank you so much for the visit, Maria. It was so good to see you and I really appreciate all your tips and can't wait for your class to start. Thank you for having me. Um, That's it, guys. I've linked all of Maria's information below so you can get in touch with her on social media and find out more about her classes. I'm also linking information on the Migrations Festival coming up at the end of January. Shunyata will also be performing in the online showcase. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to make more videos like this for you. Thanks so much, guys.